Joining us here at Post 9, Bespoke Investment Group co-founder Paul Hickey. Paul, it's good to see you. Good to be here. Have you been surprised at the market's resilience now up almost 16 percent for the I first mean, half? Anyone who's surprised is pretty much full of it at this point. Or, or anyone not surprised. Who's not surprised is full of it at this point. But coming into the year, we had such negative sentiment. Uh, you know, pretty much every strategist was looking for muted gains. Neg investor sentiment was at like extremely negative levels, short interest levels, positioning, all this stuff was very elevated. So the market was, people were very off sides and the market surprised. And to what, to your point is that what we've seen is we've seen the market looking ahead. We've seen inflation, which was the biggest worry, start to come in and show signs of easing. Even the PC data today, which is coming down slower, is moving in the right direction. And I think to that point, uh, what you're going to look is six months from now, you're going to see inflation levels much more, you know, back to near where the, still above where the Fed wants them, but still closer than we are now. As I'm looking at year-end targets. There's still a lot of 3,900s, 3,750s. Is that going to change? Are we going to see people to really chase? Why? I mean, I, I guess we're halfway through. I would have expected some target increases. Well, yeah. I mean, you would have you would have expected that. It, it's the question is what's going to convince people at this point. Uh, we've seen you know a strong rally off the lows. We're you know up 25 percent on the S&P 500. We've seen the market uh, continually move higher in the face of what's been supposedly negative news. I mean, after the debt ceiling deal, we were supposed to go down because of refilling the Treasury uh, account. You know, that hasn't happened. So, I mean, we keep looking for these boogeymen to come and they don't they don't arrive. Uh, so I think in that respect, uh, you know, it, it's a matter of it, people are on the sidelines and have to come in. Sentiment's not nearly as negative as it was uh, coming into the year. A perfect case in point is earnings season coming up. So we're past, past all this economic data, earnings season. Sentiment the last two earnings seasons has been extremely negative. Analysts couldn't cut estimates fast enough. This quarter, we're still seeing analyst estimates come lower into the reports for the companies, but it's not as extreme. So the bar is still pretty low, but not nearly as low as, low as the last two you, earnings You wouldn't seasons. say we're coming into earnings season hot? I wouldn't say that there's over-optimism on the part of analysts coming into earnings season. But the fact is they're still raising rates, the Fed and everyone else. And that drives, at the very least, drives up interest expenses for companies. Um, we've seen what, you know, the pain in commercial real estates, continued pain in regional banks, potential loss of credit in the U.S. economy. Why is that being ignored? Well, so you... you, you a lot of arguments in favor of why the, the economy should be weaker and why it, it, you know, the market should be weaker. But then we have jobless claims coming in, coming in low. We have housing rebounding. We have confidence measures, which you were just talking about, rebounding, uh, and GDP staying strong. You know, everyone's looking for a recession coming up um, on the horizon. But did we have the recession in the first half of last year? Always, the, you know, the, the traditional definition: two negative quarters of GDP, and we had that. And the counter was that employment remained strong, but real hourly wages weren't keeping up with inflation. So the employment sector may not have been as strong as the numbers at face value suggested. And now we're starting to see uh, real incomes, or our hourly earnings start to rebound.